continue with our discussion what is uh, religion. Uh, in my last discussion, I tried to explain to you uh, mainly uh, two things. Uh, one is uh, different uh, uh, uses of the word religion. Or in other words, uh, what do we mean when we say something is a religion? So we found that uh, when we use this term today, we mean uh, a system of beliefs, doctrines and teachings, a set of practices, rites and rituals, and also an organization with hierarchical structure of clergy, sacred text, and uh, objects. Now, uh, one issue we discussed was whether Buddhism is a, a religion in this sense. Now, the answer we developed was uh, actually uh, in uh, some sense, in the sense of believing in uh, power that is beyond ourselves, or believing in uh, creator God, believing in some kind of uh, uh, superhuman God or personality, Buddhism is not a religion. But on the other hand, if you look at uh, these four different ways of <coughs> using religion, we know that Buddhism is also another religion, right? Now, very often, you know, people discuss this question, what is Buddhism? So some people say Buddhism is a religion, some people say Buddhism is a philosophy, some people say Buddhism is not a religion, but a way of life, you know, that type of debate. That type of discussion is happening among uh, scholars. Very often mm, in journals uh, you see articles, you know, people write, oh, Buddhism is not religion, or oh, Buddhism is a philosophy, or oh, Buddhism is a way of life, and so on. Actually, um, when you look carefully, you can see that uh, in some sense, you can't call Buddhism a religion, right? Because if you look at the Buddha, Buddha is not a god. And also, Buddha is not a prophet of God. Like, if you take Muhammad, uh, Muhammad is supposed to be a prophet, the speaker on behalf of God on earth. And Jesus is considered to be the son of God, right? And uh, Judaism, Moses is the one who got, uh, you know, the commandments from God. So like that, uh, there are people in between God and human beings. Buddha was not like that, and he was not a god. So, in this sense, we can't say that, uh, you know, the, the Buddhism started from the Buddha is a religion, from that sense. However, on the other hand, when we look at the term, how this word is used today, although Buddhism is not a religion in that original sense, we have to say Buddhism is a religion. Now, if you look at these four aspects, you know that all these four aspects are there in Buddhism, right? In Buddhism, we have a system of beliefs. System of belief can be different from any religion to any, you know, religion to religion. But in Buddhism, we believe that sansara is long, nirvana is uh, attainable, life is dukkha. Now, these are the system of Buddhist belief. So, there is a system of belief. And then doctrines and teachings, then we have but some of the four noble truths and you know, so on and so forth. And set of practices, rites and rituals. Now, also we have these things. We have, as I said the last week, cutting a ceremony, uh, uh, observing vasa, you know, many things like that. Different countries, you know, different practices. And then organization with hierarchical structure. We also have a Buddhism as organization. In many Buddhist countries, there is a, in, in the government, there is a Buddhist, I mean, the government, I mean, the department for Buddhist affairs. And all the, there are chapters or nikayas. There are Mahanayaka terrors, uh, Thera Mandala, like in Myanmar. So, you know, you have a hierarchical thing, a structural thing, from highest to the ordinary lowest uh, Samanera. So, now, looking from this point of view, we can say that Buddhism is a religion, okay? And uh, now, there is another aspect. Now, although from the very beginning, Buddha was 
I mean, Buddha was not a god. Buddha never considered himself to be god. But it's today. Today there are some Buddhists who consider to be Buddha like God. Then what? So, although originally Buddhism started as a, a movement of, you know, the religious people, subsequently, gradually, people um, develop certain beliefs. Now, today, uh, the certain Mahayana uh, sects are there in China, Japan, and also Korea, and uh, other places wherever they live. Uh, Sukhavati view her. The Buddha as everlastingly uh, living in Sukhavati view her heaven, pure land Buddhism. Now, according to Theravada belief, we know that Buddha has attained Parnirvana. When the Buddha attained Parnirvana, or Arhant attained Parnirvana, in the Ratana Sutta it is described Nibbanti Dhira Yathayam Padipu. Like, like a lamp extinguishes, goes out. Arhans are no more. So when the Buddha attains Parnirvana, Buddha is no more. But then on the other hand, some Buddhists believe Buddha to be in Sukhavati view. So you can see it started in one manner, but by today, many different people have many different views. Theravada Buddhism is fairly close to the origin. I'm not saying these others are wrong or bad. What I'm saying is, you know, over the time, things have changed. So, you know, even Buddhism has acquired certain things uh, that you find in other religions. And also, Buddha is not God. So, therefore, Buddha cannot help us. But on the other hand, we, in Buddhist countries, we believe in many different gods who can help us. So in the religion like monotheistic religion, there is one God who can do everything. But in Buddhism, we don't believe that, you know, there are gods who can create us, create the universe. But on the other hand, we believe that there can be gods who can help us, who can protect us. Now, what about that? So although we don't believe in one God in capital G, we believe in many gods. We believe that many gods exist who can help us. So, you know, uh, when we look at religion today, although according to the origin, according to the beginning, according to the books, it is one thing. But however, what we find today is, you know, somewhat different. And in the Buddhist countries, we say, we have this concept of Buddha Sarana in Sri Lanka, or like we say Buddha Sarana. Sarana means protection. You know, in, in, in Sri Lanka, in many public vehicles, buses, you find Buddha Sarana. So the protection of the Buddha. <laughs> Although we don't believe Buddha as a god, you know, people, people believe that, you know, when you recite the name of the Buddha, or, you know, there is some protection. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. Buddhism started in one manner. However, by now, or in different periods in the history in different places, uh, Buddhism has developed to be a very popular religion. So, rites, rituals, puja, vandana, all these things are there. So, you know, we have to be really, uh, be realistically understand. So, when you go to different countries, you can see people doing in different things. If you go to uh, Tibet Buddhist area, Bhutan, Sikkim, uh, you know, that country, that type of countries, you see these uh, round objects, and then, you know, people just, uh, you know, uh, uh, rotate them. So, uh, when you climb a mountain to go to a Buddhist place, you, you see these drums-like thing from the very beginning. So, people, when they go, you know, they just uh, rotate it. So the amount, the number of time it rotates, people consider it to be good. So you know, you rotate all these drums representing Buddha Dhamma Sangha. But that practice is not in the Theravada tradition, we don't do that. But in the Tibetan Buddhism, they do it. So you know, in different rites and rituals, 
so in other words although in some sense we cannot say buddhism is a religion there are several other senses according to which we can call buddhism is a religion like any other religion okay because gradually people have made buddhism you know that type of thing now uh, sometimes you may have heard about the story of the object called ananda bodhi ananda bodhi the bodhi tree which was uh, given the name of venerable ananda now you know if we believe the story according to this story this concept of ananda bodhi started during the time of the buddha the story is that when the buddha was not in the jetavana vihara people came and left complaining the eyes not buddha so then the story says that they needed an object so representing the buddha so that people can pay homage but you know this very not very likely that it started during the time of the buddha but idea is that when the bodhi puja became very very popular maybe they created the story to put it to the buddha's time but if we believe the story then bodhi puja started during the time of the buddha now on the one hand we think that buddha was never that type of person to be worshiped like god but on the other hand you know there are stories to the effect that you know the bodhi puja bodhi vandana started uh, during the time of the buddha uh, himself you know we don't know for sure but you can see that uh, uh, rites and rituals practices starting from very early period buddha taught the dhamma in order to attain nirvana however very ordinary people in the society they don't understand that deep dhamma they are not in a position of mind or psychological disposition to live how home men you know become monks and nuns and you know attain nirvana so that type of ordinary people needed something much less not not like um, deep dhamma they needed something more simple something more simple and something practical so you know you can see that although i mean buddha wanted to teach nirvana and you know path but of course buddha knew that everybody can't follow it everybody can't follow it in the same manner to the same degree to the same intensity so people needed different uh, practices so in a way you can see from very early period within buddhism there are these uh, rites and rituals and practices uh, um, you know arising so what i'm trying to tell you is um, in one sense of course we cannot say buddhism is a religion but um, in another sense we can say buddhism is a religion like any other religion because that is how you know the the society uh, has it so these are some of the characteristics of any religion so buddhism also shares these things okay uh, now this is basically what we try to um, um uh, you know discuss uh, in our last session today i would like to uh, uh, look at with you another aspect of religion uh, basically of course we looked at the types of religion theistic non theistic theistic monistic um, polytheism henotheism and monotheism axial religion and non axial religion i'm not going to describe these things again but you know these are different types of religion when you look at the religions in the world you can then particularly the axial religion and the non axial religion non axial religion is basically the primitive religion very early where you know concept of salvation concept of liberation or freedom is not found that is non axial religion axial religion is a religion that is uh, Uh, advanced form of um, religion today when we talk about christianity judaism judaism christian islam and hinduism and buddhism jainism we are talking about the um, axial religion so uh, those categories and then um, origin of religion 
it's important thing to see how this particular thing called religion, this kind of belief originated in the world. Now, when we talk about the origin of religion, uh, we can look at this problem from um, two different uh, the levels. One is to look at religion uh, as a very primitive thing in the very primitive society. So, how religion started in the primitive society? How uh, religion uh, uh, started uh, in the world for the first time, you know, something like that. So, we can put the question, uh, uh, how did uh, religion Originate in the primitive society. When we ask this question, we are asking how did religion originate in the primitive society? We are talking about this what I call non-axial religion, you know, very basic primitive uh, religion. How did this start? Uh, if we believe in uh, evolution of things, how did really religion start? What became religion? What has become religion today? How did it start from the very beginning? So very uh, early origin of religion. Uh, how did it start? Why religion was needed? Okay. Now, uh, there are many views about it, particularly uh, um, anthropologists who study human societies, ethnologists, uh, also sociologists uh, have studied this problem. How did the religion start uh, in the world? Now, in order to see this, you know, we can always look at uh, uh, I mean, we can look at uh, some of the ideas, origin of religion. Now, if we just start from Buddhism itself, here I have a quotation from Dharmapada. Bahum ve saranang yanti, pabbatani vanani cha, arama rukka chetyani manusa bhaya tajita. Bahum ve saranang yanti, pabbatani vanani cha. Many people take refuge in pabbatani vanani in the mountains and forests. Pabbatani vanani. Arama rukha chetyani. Arama uh, means uh, religious places. Rukha, certain trees. Chaityani means, chetyani means monuments. Uh, built for uh, certain gods or, you know, certain religious objects. So, arama rukha chetyani. Manusa bhaya tajita. Why? Manusa bhaya tajita. They are threatened by fear. So, in this Dhammapada statement, Buddha says that this type of beliefs, practices started because people were threatened by fear. Bhaya tajita. Now, bhaya, fear, why fear? Fear is basically at a very early stage of uh, human evolution, fear arose in people basically because the people could not understand what is happening. People could not understand what is happening. People could not understand what is happening in the, in the nature. Okay? So, they were trying to understand, but they could not understand. Now, I think uh, last week discussion also I mentioned, like if you look at fire, uh, how fire started, that is people's uh, experiences, you know, when in the forest, when the trees, branches uh, touch each other uh, to the, in the wind, you know, suddenly fire starts. Now then fire burns, fire burns whole long large areas, so people get scared how people don't know what fire is. They don't know how fire started. 
But you know, when they see fire, when they know that fire is destructive, then uh, they become uh, scared of it. So, you know, this response was uh, uh, fear to the fire. But then it may have taken long years for these people to tame fire and make use of fire. Then, of course, uh, they, they knew how to cook with fire, you know, all sorts of manner. But basic fascination with fire is something you see in uh, many religions. And particularly if you look at um, uh, Hindu religion, even today, we can see that uh, Agni is a, is, is a god. Agni is a god. Agni is... Uh, uh, Agni is fire. So, um, Agni is a god. Now, it is very interesting. Today, of course, any ordinary person knows, you know, how fire comes and, you know, uh, you know how to control the fire. Ordinary people don't consider it to be God. But nevertheless, you can see that certain beliefs coming from tradition, long time, you can see the, the, this phenomenon has been considered to be, to be God. Now, some of these beliefs, and you take also sun and moon, and also the stars, these things at some point people didn't understand. So, sun was considered to be a God. Moon was considered to be God, and also the uh, the stars were considered to be gods. But today we know so much about these things. We know so much about these things, but still people consider these things to be gods. So in the ancient Greek tradition, also you see that uh, uh, there were sun worshippers. Like uh, we read that. Heraclitus and you know his followers worshipped uh, sun and in the Indian tradition we see fire god still today and uh, it's very interesting uh, the, the, in the Indian religious tradition, Vedic tradition uh, fire and burning things in the fire is one of the key major religious uh, rituals last year I remember I went went to uh, Uttar Pradesh uh, where there was a huge uh, Hindu religious festival. One of the main item was, you know, they had this fire and then Brahmins were sitting around and chanting Vedas and also, you know, the pouring uh, ghee and other things to the fire. So the maintaining fire without uh, break and also feeding ghee and all these things into fire. So you have to see, you have to see it to believe. And also in the same manner, in certain Red Indian traditions I have seen. So the fire is a sacred object. So sometime when some kind of uh, festivities or function going on, they have uh, fire and then they keep the fire non-stop. So whole group of people sitting around and always, you know, putting firewood and, you know, other things, keeping it going on. So you can see, in a manner, from these things you can see how, through non-understanding of natural objects, non-understanding of natural phenomena, people start, people develop some kind of fear. So out of that fear, you start worshipping these objects, okay? So, this is a very good example. In uh, last week, I discussed with you how um, the belief in God started in uh, Indian tradition. So, it started with what we call belief in many gods. However, before the belief in many gods started, there were stages like representing natural objects to be considered to be human beings. So, uh, anthropo anthropomorphism, that means attributing human characteristics to ordinary objects. And then, next step is to consider them, these things as divine. So, first you consider these things as uh, uh, objects, 
and then sacred objects and then human beings and then gods. Now you can see this evolution in, uh, in the Vedic tradition you have uh, uh, you have uh, Ushas Ushas means uh, dawn early morning Ushas now Ushas is considered to be a goddess female god and in the Vedic hymns you see Ushas being described as a young beautiful lady now, you know the, the but then what is it it is the dawning of the sun early morning when sun rises you know it's beautiful flowers bloom and you know the the, the uh, environment is uh, beautiful so they consider they thought you know this is ushas and ushas to be a goddess so you see how gradually this kind of beliefs starting in society so at some point uh, there were so many uh, different gods in the indian tradition now interestingly though this is happening not only on, uh, in india this is happening all over the world because human beings had the same type of psychology now here the interesting thing is this concept arises from uh, non understanding lack of understanding right and then you consider certain things to be sacred now if you go to india actually uh, you might not see in uh, very much in this society but if you go to india you can see that now because of the story of hanuman monkey is a sacred animal and also because of the uh, the stories of god the cow is a sacred animal and also bull is considered to be a sacred animal so i have seen in some certain devalayas uh, there is a, uh, the 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 statue of a bull so people go and you know people wash the statue and take the water and drink and go to this statue and kiss it so you know like that you you see various types of things so all these things come due to lack of understanding now if you look at uh, say burmese society also in many other societies where people believe in the dead people now death is another mystery in life somebody is living working talking and suddenly that person stops everything now how can you understand it okay so they think that okay that person there was a person he or she left the body and he or she is living in a different manner so you know because you don't understand this change is ununderstandable so you consider to be uh, that person to be uh, some kind of spirit some kind of um, being not necessarily a god but you know living in over there dark and outside so you know in order to make them happy you do certain things so uh, in societies in india you find it in one manner in countries like uh, ours you find it in you know, other manner so things associated with um, uh, dead people so in anthropologists sometimes talk about what is called animism uh, animism means basically belief in uh, uh, dead people uh, we believe that you know they exist in you know certain manner and then uh, we also believe that you know they can do harm to you unless you keep them happy so you know you make various types of offerings so uh, these things and uh, in our discussion uh, of uh, uh, hindu tradition we saw that starting it from polytheism finally going into many types of gods and then finally coming into monotheism one god and also uh, up to monism but basically here we, what we are trying to understand is uh, how this in the early societies you know these things started now one important thing in that sense is we can see manusa bhayata jita so psychological reason is fear behind fear what you have is ignorance 
you have fear because you don't know and once you know it uh, you don't have fear in uh, majjhima nikaya there is a discourse called bhaya bhairava sutta bhaya bhairava sutta in that sutta buddha describes uh, uh, his practice in the forest as a bodhisattva what uh, one place buddha describes sometimes in the night he sees something moving something uh, being uh, uh, shaken and then uh, he says he gets the impression that some kind of um, a ghost or some kind of demon because you don't know what, what mood but then buddha says that then he goes to that place and find that to see that it was not a ghost it was not a demon it was animal animal was moving but in the darkness you don't see the animal you only see something is moving because you don't know what it is then fear comes to you thinking that that must be some kind of inhuman being or you go where it is uh, being moved to see that it is a tree branch or something some leaves uh, being uh, shaken so when you go to that place and you find what it is then of course fear goes otherwise what happens is if you did not go and really check it then you have fear you see from ignorance fear comes pretty simple thing is you don't know what sun means you don't know what moon means so ignorance and then from ignorance fear comes or in the forest you don't know what is what mood so you think that is in human being but to see that it is an animal so once you know it fear goes okay now this is basic psychology uh, so in that sense we can see that uh, primitive religion started with uh, fear and fear started with ignorance psychologically we can say how religion started originally ignorance and fear ignorance is something related to knowledge lack of knowledge fear is something related to emotions right ignorance means not knowing so ignorance means not knowing is related to knowledge and then fear is something related to emotions so the you can see knowledge related thing and also emo, emotion related thing in other words we can say in the primitive society uh, religious beliefs started because of ignorance uh, and you know the fear so these are the two main things how mm, in the primitive societies religious beliefs started uh, ignorance and fear so out of fear they started uh, doing various uh, um, rites and rituals in order to appease uh, these objects there is another thing in addition to ignorance and fear there is what's called uh, sense of a uh, sense of helplessness sense of helplessness now ignorance and fear the other aspect is like at the same time you feel that before these mighty powers you are helpless you can't do anything so that's why your response always you want to placate them satisfy them please them because you are helpless now fire comes before he which fire you can't do anything you are helpless sun rises and you know in some months no rain sun is scorching and burning uh, the trees and plants on the earth and the cultivations are burned so you know you have a sense of helplessness you you under, don't understand don't know and also therefore you are help, helpless so this sense of helplessness is another very important psychological factor for religions to be arise now again look at what science is doing now today we understand these things by science now for example if you take lightning 
Lightning can be very dangerous. If lightning hits you, you die. If lightning hits hit trees, trees burn, get burned. But today, of course, it will happen even today. But today we know what lightning means. When raining lightning, we don't go out. We know how to protect ourselves. But those days, people did not know those things. So they are helpless. You know, this sense of helplessness. So we have three things, ignorance, fear, and also sense of helpless. Actually, fear comes because we are helpless. So all these three things are interconnected, okay? You cannot separate. People feel helpless. People cannot do anything. So therefore, you ask for favors from gods. Can't do anything. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, so this is how the primitive religion started. However, it is also important to see these things still continue. Even today, these things still are there. Although we have scientific knowledge. We know some these things, but still, you know, like in India, you have fire worship. In other places also, we have these things. So, uh, although primitive religion started in that manner, you know, it doesn't mean that primitive religion is gone. We ourselves have primitive religious beliefs. Although we, we know scientifically certain things to explain, but still. So anyhow, that is the interesting thing, how these things continue today. But originally, how did religion start and originate is basically out of these three things, we can say. You know, people were ignorant, people were scared, and, you know, people were helpless. People were helpless. So, uh, you know, you have to rely on uh, other powers. The religion started in that manner, continues even today. That's a different thing. That's a, another, I mean, different way to understand. We need to understand in different manner. Now, we know that for our examination, we have to study hard. But at the same time, we pray God to pass our examination. Or people go to monasteries <laughs> to worship the, 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 pay homage to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha before examination. So you think that, you know, these Buddha Dhamma Sangha can help you, gods can help you. Interestingly, this is not happening in uh, uh, only primitive societies or ordinary uh, societies, even in a country like Japan very high in scientific knowledge and everything, but people do the, these kinds of things. So, you know, interesting thing is, uh, even though these things started with the sense of ignorance, fear and helplessness at a very early period, even in the first part of 21st century we are living now, even now these things exist in the society, even in very developed societies. I'm not going to answer the question why this exists in the developed societies. You will have to think about it. But interestingly, in, in many developed societies, still you find these things, people have this belief. In a way, we can say, even though we are so knowledgeable today, we know so much, but human beings are basically the same, helpless, poor human beings before nature or before things, uh, so still we need some kind of help from uh, unknown, uh, you know, the forces. But, you know, that's, that's a, another matter we need, we can discuss later, but I'm not going into detail into this. So, you know, this, uh, the, the Buddha's view, Bahumve Saranangyanti, Pabbatani Vanani, Aramrukhe Chetyani, Manusa Bhayatajita, people are threatened by the fear. Of course, Buddha goes on, if you know Dhammapada, Netan ko saranam kemang, netan saranam uttamang, netan saranam agam, sabadukha pamuchati. Buddha says that this is not a great refuge. By going for refuge into trees and monuments, you can't be liberated from sansara. Netan saranam agam, sabadukha pamuchati. Then Buddha says, dukkhaṁ dukkha samuppādhaṁ dukkha sa jātikkamaṁ and so on. You know, it goes on describing. So look at uh, what the Buddha said there. So Buddha says that this is the reason, uh, reason is the fear, and also we saw that ignorance and um, 
uh, helplessness. These are the things uh, that cause primitive religion in the society. Belief in gods, worship of gods, and offering things to the god. So all these things are basically uh, the, 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 the belief, um, the fear. And then the, in the religion started in that manner, one of the key characteristics is actually the belief. You have to believe things because things are not clear to you. You don't know. Because you do not know, you believe that it is so. So the trust or the belief is considered to be in the religions to be something um, very, very important and very, very powerful. So you have to believe things. Remember when we talk about uh, believe and then on the other hand, no, these are two different things. If you know about something, there is nothing to believe. But you have to believe, I am not talking about the, uh, there are different senses of belief. Now if I say I believe that you are a good person, no bad person, that's a different thing. I am not talking about that sense. But believe in the sense, we, we think that, you know, certain powers beyond our knowledge exist. Okay, now that is the meaning, idea of believing. But if you know something, then when you know, you don't need to believe. But if you don't have knowledge, then you have to have the belief. In this primitive religion, belief was the most important thing. You have to believe. Knowledge was not a factor. Because if people had knowledge, then people will not be scared. I said ignorance is the reason. So, a lot of ignorance, people did not know. So, therefore, uh, people were scared. But then, you know, you have to believe that, you know, certain things, certain unknown things, you know, this aspect. Uh, when we discuss Buddhism and, you know, other religions later, we will see, you know, this distinction is very important thing. Because in Buddhism, we don't have much to believe. We have a lot to know. Now that's why Buddha says, uh, when you go to these objects for refuge, it is not great. But when you go to Buddha Dhamma Sangha and for Dukkha, Dukkha Samuppada, that is not belief, that is knowledge. Okay? So knowledge and belief are two different uh, things here. In the, in, the, in the primitive religion, what you did not have was knowledge. So the belief is there, you believe something. In fact, uh, uh, starting from this, we know that uh, different in many gods finally evolved into a monotheism, which I explained to you, believing in one god. But then even in one god, actually, the belief is the central thing. You have to believe that you have to believe God is good, God is right, God is always telling you the right thing. You know, without that belief, you can't do. You remember the, we talked about this last week, but I, I will tell you an example. This example is uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, there is a book called Isaiah. This, uh, the book Isaiah, there is an interesting story. That story is about Abraham. Abraham is the, uh, the first person, you know, the uh, originator of the Judaic tradition. I think I told you that uh, according to Judaism, uh, there is a covenant or agreement between God and um, Abraham. Okay. Now at one point, okay, Abraham accepts God as the God. Uh, you know. But then at point, one point, God, according to this story, God want to test Abraham's faith belief. Whether Abraham is really believing in him, he want to test. What God asked is, he asked Abraham, Abraham had his small child, to keep the child on the altar and to, you know, cut his neck, you know, behead him. Uh, can a father do this? Can a father imagine doing it? No. But, the moment God says, okay, Abraham, sacrifice your son to me, 
The story says that God keeps the son and he takes the sword to cut the child into pieces. However, when he raises the sword, God stops it, according to the story. But you know, the, this in, in, the story is very interesting because it shows that if God says something that you should do, you do it. No second question. You know, this is the kind of faith or the belief here we are talking about. Now, you know, again, today we can see that uh, in the name of God, people do a lot of killings, right? In the name of God, today also, people do a lot of killings. Now, the main reason is this. If you believe that, okay, this is said by God, God is right, and then, you know, you do whatever God says. So, you can see that in the theistic religions, uh, concept of belief or faith is something very, very crucial. So, here you can see, because, you know, you have to believe, because uh, you don't know it. If you know it, there is nothing to believe. When we come to Buddhism, we have Sadha and Panya, faith and knowledge, right? So, when a person becomes uh, Arahant, we describe him as a Sadho, a person who doesn't have Sadha. Arahant cannot, doesn't have Sadha. So, we have, on the one hand, we have Sadha and then we have Panya. If you are full of sadha, then of course you don't have panya. Sometimes if you are full of panya, then you don't have sadha. But the, in, the, in the correct sense, of course, sadha and panya, ultimately, when your panya is developed, your sadha, you don't need sadha in the sense to believe. That's why an arahant who has attained arahant is described as as, as sadho. Arahant is described as Asadho. Asadho. In the Dhammapada, you have a stanza Asadho, Akatanyocha, Sandhi Chedocha, Yonaro, and so on. Okay? Asadho means uh, Arahant doesn't have Sadha. Why? Because Arahant knows when you have no knowledge. But anyhow, we will, I will keep that subject uh, aside for now. So you can see that in the primitive religion how it uh, started. Uh, because of these knowledge related and psychological emotional reasons, people started worshipping natural objects. Then they, they, they uh, ascribed uh, divinity, divineness to these objects and gods were created. So it is interesting you can see when you read the Vedic literature, in fact, it is not God created human beings, but human beings created gods for them to worship, okay? So this is basically how primitive religion started, okay? Now we will move on, okay? Now what I described up to this point is how historically in the ancient societies what we call religion developed, okay? Religious beliefs. So gradually there were people who were attending to it. So the priests and you know, all these uh, the groups of people developed. However, then another important thing is look at the origin of the organized religion. Now, what, how do we understand the origin of organized religion? How do we say that, uh, say, if you take Judaism, Christianity and Islam, or Buddhism and Hinduism, how did these religions start? Now, can we say that these religions start out of fear, uh, out of ignorance? How can we talk about the mm, beginning of organized religion? Up to this point, what I described to you is the beginning of religion in the primitive society. But in the developed society, uh, how did religion start? Uh, I gave you this classification of uh, axial religion and non-axial religion. Axial religion means religious that uh, have the concept of liberation, moksha, nirvana. Uh, how did that religion start? Now it is interesting to see when you look at this organized religion, either from historical evolution, for example, Hinduism, Judaism, or as a response to already existing religions. Samana movement in India, including Jainism and Buddhism, that's how Christianity and Islam in Judeo-Christian tradition. Now, 
you can see there are two ways how the presently existing developed religion started. Now, one way is from historical evolution. Now, how Hinduism today started in the very ancient times, when you read the Rig Veda, you see the, uh, what we discussed earlier, uh, anthropomorphic uh, uh, belief, like uh, as attributing humanness to objects, and then attributed the divineness to objects. So we have so many gods. So you see the Hinduism, what we call Hinduism today, it started in the uh, ancient Indian tradition, gradually from starting from polytheism, belief in many gods, to henotheism, to in some manner monotheism, believing in one god. Now in Hinduism you have Vaishnava, who believe in Vishnu as the God, or Shai, Shaivism, who believe Shiva as God. So you have these basic um, um, categories of religion. So this is an example for um, historical evolution. Okay? So the certain religions that exist in today started from historical evolution. Now, initially, originally, in the societies, religion started out of fear and ignorance. However, the evolution of that religion is, you see, uh, in Hinduism and also in Judaism. In fact, this word Hinduism, although we talked about Hinduism, uh, we have to remember that uh, the word Hinduism is something very new. Okay? Uh, you can't say during the time of the Buddha, Hinduism was there, okay? because uh, actually there was no uh, such thing called Hinduism during that time. Uh, what happened was in India, there were all these different beliefs in different gods. And um, when British colon colonialized India, you know, they consider, they thought that uh, uh, in the entire India there is one religion. So they coined this word Hinduism. Hinduism comes from Hindu. Hindu comes from Hindu's river. So then finally this word you have Hinduism. So the idea is that there is one religion in India. But actually that, that, uh, that idea is not very correct. It's not like in India one religion. There were many different religious beliefs in India. So when the British considered that you know all these things are Hinduism, so today we talk about Hinduism as if one religion. Uh, there are certain things shared by all uh, Indian traditions, it's true. But of course, there was not really a one single religious tradition in India like that. Because India is a, such a huge, vast place, different areas, people have different beliefs. Uh, now, all these things combined, we use the word today Hinduism. But remember, during the time of the Buddha, Hinduism was not there. If you talk about Hinduism during the time of the Buddha, you have to be very clear that this term is something very new. What did we have during the time of the Buddha? We can use the word Brahmanism. The, the belief of the Brahmins. But of course, apart from Brahmins' belief, there were many, many beliefs that ordinary uh, people had. Right? They were not even shared by uh, Brahmins. So Brahmins had certain beliefs, but basically in the Buddhist text, we are reacting to uh, Brahmanism. Buddha was reacting to Brahmanism. So we can say during the time of the Buddha, there was Brahmanism. Right? But uh, we can't say during the time of the Buddha there was Hinduism. Okay. However, today what we talked uh, as Hinduism, you can say, is something that gradually, historically developed. So today we are talking about the world religion called Hinduism. Uh, how did that world religion start? Answer is that world religion started uh, uh, as a result of gradual revolution of so many, uh, you know, the thousand of years, okay. 
finally uh, it uh, has come to this level one example of course there are many examples one example is now during the time of the buddha uh, buddhism talks about mahabrahma but today do hindus talk about mahabrahma no of course brahma brahman concept is there in the ved and the upanishad but uh, today you don't find people people like vishnu or shiva people don't worship brahma like that but during the time of the buddha it was brahma and then subsequently we had this concept of trinity or trimurti in sanskrit brahma vishnu maheshwar now today out of that brahma people don't worship very much and then vishnu one strong group of hindus worship vishnu maheshwara ishwara is again another god but he is not worship like it was he was worship long time ago now you can see that what we call hinduism itself is a evolution of something so the hinduism talks about mahabrahma hinduism talks about brahma vishnu maheshwar now today in hinduism we find uh, uh, vaishnava and shaiva vishnu and shiva however in the presently hinduism is not only vishnu and shiva we also have what is called vedanta advaita vedanta now advaita vedanta means they don't believe in any gods so actually they believe in uh, atman brahman as a, as a principle so advaita vedanta is some kind of sometimes described as a, a form of monism so advaita vedanta advaita vedanta this arises from uh, evolution of upanishadic philosophy in the upanishadic philosophy ultimately in this particular system there is no god so this is not a god centered religion but this believes in atman brahman to be the uh, basic fundamental universal principle but that is not a god so you can see indian religion starting from uh, natural objects anthropomorphism polytheism kinotheism monotheism to monism <coughs> and uh, so all these different uh, stages so the so the the, the first belief is uh, uh, you know the we can say nature worship and then we can talk about anthro uh or mopisa i'm not sure about the spelling here so the nature worship and the former and then we have polytheism and then this stage of hinotheism and uh, what what we call monotheism and then finally we have monism so monotheism we have something like uh, vaishnava shaiva so this is monotheism and then monism is advaita vedanta in monism you have the principle of atman brahman so this is basically how uh, uh, what we call hinduism today started than you all so now i explain to you two things how religion started in the primitive society and then out of that how a modern today a religion has gradually evolved up to today what we call hinduism okay so originally this started as a, uh, out of fear out of ignorance and then you know gradually developing today uh, people have believing in vaishnava vishnu shiva shaivism and also believing in 
Atman, Brahman principle and then Advaita Veda. So this is basically how religion started in the organized sense in India. But this is not the way it has started everywhere. Now, for example, if you take Judaism, in the Christian tradition, uh, Christianity, Islam come from Judaism, okay? Now, how did Judaism start? If you look at the uh, history of Judaism, I think I uh, already uh, uh, somewhat explained to you, uh, Judaism is uh, basically a, a religion that uh, started what they believe to be the covenant or agreement between God and Abraham. So we use the word C-O-V-E. Covenant, which means agreement. Agreement between God and Abraham. Abraham is the pioneer. The, 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 his, I mean, the first person in the Judaic tradition who represented Jew people. So this is why, you know, the, the, so, uh, the God promised to protect Jews. So this particular belief that chosen people, the concept of chosen people, Jews as chosen people, chosen by God. So Jews believe that, uh, believe that um, uh, only Jew people go to heaven, okay? Others don't go to heaven, only Jew people go to heaven because this agreement is only between Jew people and the God. So uh, now Judaism as a religion started from this belief. God as a savior, the concept of God as a savior comes from there. So Judaism started as a historical revolution. So Hinduism started as a, evolved as a historical, you know, response and historical revolution. So those are two different religions. But what about Buddhism? How did Buddhism start? Now, if you take Buddhism to be a religion, how did Buddhism start? Now, when we look at the history, how Buddhism started, how Judaism, how Christianity started, how Islam started, it's interesting. Now, Buddhism started in India as one of the Shravana traditions. Buddhism is one of the Shravana traditions. Now, uh, who are the Shravanas? Why Shravanas? Now, basically, Shravanas were those who were against Brahmins. That was their common characteristics, okay? Their common characteristics was they did not approve Brahmanism. They were against Brahmanism. They reject Brahmanism. They reject the Brahmanic uh, social uh, philosophy. They reject the caste system, Varna Dharma. So that was a common characteristic of all the Sramanas. However, within the Sramana group, uh, last time I referred to six religious teachers during the time of the Buddha, right? Purana Kassapa, Pagoda Kachan, Makkali Gosal, and so on. There were six religious teachers, all were Sramanas. But different Sramana groups. All the Sramana groups were together in rejecting Brahmanism. But of course, among themselves, uh, different Sramana groups were different from each other. Now, if you look at the Buddha, what do you think? the Buddha's religion would have been in his household life. Most possibly Buddha was a Hindu, right? Although we use the word Hinduism, it's a new thing, but you know, they, they followed the traditional religion, right? So that was a religion that was in India during the time of the Buddha. Now, if Buddha was satisfied with Brahmanism, if Buddha was okay with Brahmanism, do you think that Buddhism will arise? No. So the main reason you can see that the, the second stage, a certain religions have started as a response to or reaction to the existing religion. So this is the second one. So the, if you look at the organized religion, organized religion started, uh, number one is by Gradual, historical, 
evolution. Number two is as a response or reaction to existing religion. By gradual historical evolution, Hinduism, Judaism. However, if you look at Buddhism as a response or reaction to the existing religion, as a reaction or response to the existing religion. Now, uh, if Buddha was satisfied with uh, Hinduism or Brahmanism, Buddha will not become a Sravana, right? There was no need for him to become a Sravana. Now, Buddha was not satisfied with Brahmanism. Buddha wanted to find a way to end suffering. He did not find, you know, he can do that in Brahmanic religious system. So what he did was, he joined the Sravana tradition. And then when he realized the truth, then the organization he started subsequently became known as Samana Sakya Puttya. So during the time of the Buddha, you know, there is no something called Buddhism, okay? <laughs> but there was a different religious leader as Buddha and his followers. But in ancient India, there were many different religious uh, traditions, religious teachers and followers. But today we don't find all these, we don't have Makkali Gosala's religion, we don't have Purana Kasapas religion, we don't have Ajita Kesakambala's religion. But what we have is from ancient time, only Jainism and Buddhism. But then during the time of the Buddha, we can see that there were so many religious teachers with their followers. So we can't say that those were different religions here. All those were different Sramana groups. All the Sramana groups uh, hit the road when they were hungry in the daytime to get some Pindapata from people. So they were common, they were like, uh, they were very much similar. So ordinary Indian people, I don't think they really had a problem, you know, any Sramana, they would give Pindapata. You remember in the Vasala Sutta Buddha says, Yo Brahmanangva, Samanangva, Bhatta Kale Upatite, Proseti, Vacha Nachadeti, Tanjanya Vasaloiti. What is the meaning of that? If a Sramana or Brahmana comes at the meal time, if somebody doesn't give him a meal but uh, uh, chases him away with bad word, he's a Vasala. Now, does, was Buddha talking about the Buddhist monks? No. He was talking about any Sramana or Brahmana, any religious person, okay? So we cannot talk about religions in today's sense during the time of the Buddha. But gradually from those traditions, you know, religious traditions evolved. And today out of those things, there may have been so many uh, Sramana traditions during the time of the Buddha. We have only mainly two uh, uh, Jainism and Buddhism. But if you look at Brahmajala Sutra, there are 62 views. These 62 views may have been held by 62 different groups of people. But do we have those religious groups today? No, we don't have them. But we do have the Buddhism and Jainism. But if you look at both Buddhism and Jainism, if Buddha was satisfied with Brahmanism, Buddhism will not arise. If Jaina Mahavira, Nikantadanta Putta was happy with Brahmanism, Jainism will not be there. So you can see both Buddhism and Jainism, you can say, started rejecting Brahmanism. It started because they rejected Brahmanism. If they were happy with Brahmanism, no Buddhism. If, if Siddhartha was happy with uh, uh, Brahmanism, no religion. If Jaina Mahavira was happy with uh, religion, Brahmanism, no Jaina religion. So you can see that some organized religions that exist today started as a reaction or response, rejection of the old religion. Now, you can understand Christianity and Islam in the same way. Now, if you look at Christianity, now Jesus Christ, I think I told you this other day also, Jesus Christ was a Jew. He was born into a Jewish family. 
Not only that, later he became what is called Jewish rabbi. Rabbi, R-A-B-I. Rabbi means Jewish religious person. So Jesus was a Jew. But what happened was Jesus did not like the Judaism existed up to that point. He talks about God as his father, Abba. That's the Jewish word he is using. Uh, as his father. So what he said was, the, what is practiced by Jews by that time was not, not good for his father, God. And also Jesus uh, did not believe that God is only for Jew people. Now you know this, the meaning of this word, we are using this word Catholic. What is the meaning of this word? Catholic. Catholicism. Catholic means common, universal. So Jesus wanted to show that uh, salvation of God is Catholic. That means salvation of God is for everybody. Now Jewish people said that they are the chosen people. So according to their belief, only they go to heaven and not to others. So salvation is only for Jewish people. But Jesus said that no, salvation is God is for everybody. Now you see there is a very, very huge difference between in that sense Judaism and Christianity. But remember, both religions believe in the same God. Both religions. But then uh, Jewish people thought that, you know, this, uh, Jesus is crazy. Gone off his head. So, you know, finally they uh, crucified him and killed him. But suppose Jesus was a good Jew. You think... Christianity will start? No. There is no reason. Because he would have been born a Jew and he would have died a Jew. End of the story. There is no Christianity. So you can see that Christianity started because Jesus was not satisfied his own religion. Like Buddhism started because Buddha was not satisfied Brahmanism, with Brahmanism. Uh, Jesus was not satisfied with uh, Judaism. That is how um, Christianity started. So Christianity is the response. Okay. However, now when we look at uh, the, the Islam, we can see that Islam is really a response to Christianity. Okay. Now if people accepted Christianity, Islam will not be there. Now if you look at Islam, you can see that the very important difference is in Christianity you have this concept of Trinity. Trinity means um, concept of Trinity means uh, the, the concept of God has been understood as consisting uh, three different uh, aspects or involving three different uh, we would say uh, personalities. Trinity, so uh, the concept of Trinity, so in sense, sense Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So this is called Trinity. Now, Father, Son. Uh, Father is you know, the God who created, Son is Jesus, and Holy Ghost is, you know, not really a person according to this understanding, but, you know, the whole God spirit, uh, impersonality. So anyhow, uh, in the Christian tradition, God is three. God has three aspects. Now, in Judaism, the concept is God is only one. Now, when we look at the term monotheism, monotheism means only one God. However, if you look at only one God and then Trinity, three aspects of God, this was considered to be a violation of monotheism. If God is only one, how can he have, how can he have um, three? So the Christian concept is something like three in one, three in one God. But you know, this concept was not in, um, um, accepted. So Christianity was considered to be a uh, dilution of, watering of the uh, distorting the concept of God. In fact, Muhammad, Islam is really again reaffirming the monotheism. Of course, in Islam, the God is called Allah, but you know, if you look at um, 
Holy Quran, Islamic religious book. How many of you have seen it? Anybody who has read it? Yes. Come on, in this country you have so many Muslims, right? In the world there are so many Muslims. Oh, get to the library, the Quran, and you must read it. Okay? Particularly because even if we don't have Islam in this country, we should read it. But particularly in this country, you have Quran. So you should know what the Islamic people believe. Do you have read the Bible? Anybody? Some parts? <laughs> okay, okay. Actually, Bible in English is a very beautiful reading. I'm sure Bible must have been translated into Burmese. But uh, if you can read it in English, uh, it's even better. Now, you know, you must read because in the month our Buddhist uh, students, you know, we think that uh, reading Quran, reading Bible is, you know, not very good. No, nothing like that. By reading Quran or reading Bible, you are not going to become Muslim or Christian. But in order to understand what they believe, you have to read. Now, if you read Quran, what I want to tell you is if you read Quran, Practically every paragraph in Quran ends with asserting that Allah is the God and Allah is the only one God. Now in, uh, you know, in the Muslim mosque, what you hear, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar means God is great. So, you know, God is one God. Now you see something very interesting. Judaism asserting one God. Christianity coming into three aspects of God. Now Islam again affirming oneness of God. So actually Islam in a way is going back to Judaism. Okay? Because uh, now if you look at uh, Quran, uh, in Quran Jesus is a saint. Jesus' mother Mary is also a saint. So they are mentioned, they are in the same tradition. But of course although Jesus is saint, but Jesus is not son of God. According to Islamic belief, according to Judaic belief, a God cannot have a son. Okay, God, God cannot produce other gods. God is one. <laughs> That's the idea. So you can see, uh, originally, Judaism started from historical evolution. Christianity started as a response to Judaism. And Islam started as a response to Christianity. So you see the two ways of how religion started. Initially, originally in the primitive society, religion started out of fear, ignorance, helplessness. Right. And then when we come to organized religion today, in the today's organized religion, certain religions started as a result of historical evolution. Hinduism, and Judaism. And then certain other religions started as a response to existing religion. So Buddhism started as a response to existing Brahmanism. Jainism started as a response to existing Brahmanism. Christianity started as a response to existing Judaism. And Islam started as a response to... And even more modern, more later religions like Sikhism, you can see combination of Hinduism and Islam. Baha'ism, combination of, you know, again, all, several religions. So anyway, we are not going to discuss all the religions in the world, but if we take the main religions. Okay, uh, so uh, what I have been telling you is today how religion started, okay? So, so far we discussed certain aspects of religion, characteristic. Uh, how religion started, so... Uh, on the one hand, we can uh, talk about it, how primitive religion started in primitive society and also how the developed religion started in the developed sense. In other sense, uh, what we would like to call axial religion, religion that considered to be the salvation. So the, all the monotheistic religions, salvation through God. And then Jainism, Buddhism, Advaita Vedanta, salvation is not through God salvation through your own effort. Right? So this is basically the difference. I think I would um, wind up from here and then uh, uh, we, we can, we will continue from
from there for the next uh, discussion. So, um, if you have any questions or anything to clarify uh, in the discussion so far, you can ask questions. Okay. Yes. Say it again. The word belief and no, yeah, yeah. No and belief, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, if so, we believe the, the book, we want to believe the Buddha because of believing, and then we worship the Buddha because of knowing. Okay. We must know the difference between them. Okay. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you. In fact, uh, when we use the word believe, uh, in English, word belief has several senses. Okay. Now, uh, for us to say uh, the belief in a certain sense. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that something we believe in, something we do not know, okay? But uh, it could mean something somewhat different. But so there are more than one meaning for this word. But basically when we say belief or believe as an act or belief as a noun, what it means is in religious traditions, we believe in certain things we have not experienced. Things we don't know any in any other manner. For example, if you say that God exists, you don't know. Then you believe that exists, right? No reason, only you believe. Maybe your religion says, maybe your parents say God exists, so you believe. But have you seen? No. Now this is the belief we are talking in religion. But on the other hand, uh, the, the word belief has some epistemological sense. Like when you say we believe in the Buddha, actually Buddha was a historical person, right? We know that Buddha lived in India. So there is nothing to believe about it. But in that sense, like believing in God. But on the other hand, we can use the word belief in a more epistemological, knowledge-related sense. Okay. So this is the difference. Now, if you take Sadha and Panya in Buddhism, Sadha is something we believe. Panya is something we know. Now, for example, imagine this. When you are practicing the path, Buddha says that if you follow this path, you can attain Nirvana. But when you start, have you seen Nirvana? Have you realized Nirvana? No. Why do you follow Buddha? I mean, during the time of the Buddha, you know that Buddha did not have Buddhists, right? So all the people who came to Buddha were new people. So they accepted what the Buddha said and then gave up their life and became monks and started practicing. But if Buddha, what the Buddha said is wrong, then their life will be in vain. But you know, so there is what is called sadha. But in Buddhism, sadha is always, according to the Buddha, akaravati sadha. What is akaravati sadha? Have you heard that word? There are two forms of sadha. Amulika sadha, akaravati sadha. I will explain it later someday, but basically akaravati sadha is you rationally believe something. Because you have to believe certain things rationally, otherwise you can't live. So to, to believe to that extent is okay. For example, you go to a restaurant, you order a cup of tea. You have to trust that person, otherwise how can you drink? If you have no belief, no trust, they are trust. You will not drink the cup of tea because you can put poison, he can put poison. But you are trust, right? So, you know, that type of thing is needed in our life. So the difference is, in religion, even in Buddhism, we follow certain things out of trust or belief, but of course that has to be rational belief. Now, say for example, when you become the follower of the Buddha and follow it, how do you know that Nirvana is true? But then there are other monks, other arahants, you can see. Although you have not got it, there are other people who have got it. 
so you can believe, but your belief is very rational, right? The monk Sangha will say that, okay, we have realized it. Then you follow Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. The Buddha, teaching and the Sangha. Why Sangha? Because when you want to follow the path, examples are the Sangha. Okay? So, Reverend, uh, this word has several different meanings. Uh, now, basically in religions, we have to really believe without much of a uh, evidence. Now, in the Abraham's story, when God says that, kill your child for me. Now, Abraham thinks that God is right. You know, that is the, some kind of, you know, the faith, belief. So, in other words, they are is to believe, rational belief, akarvati sadha, and also amulika sadha, baseless belief. So, what Buddhism rejects is the baseless belief. But to some point, we have to have rational belief. However, basically, difference between knowledge and belief is, when we say we believe something, we have not 100% evidence. But when you say no, it's a different thing, right? I mean, it's, it's something like that. You know, the, the, I can say that I have something in mind. Then you believe me because I have not told you any lies. But you don't know. But when I do this, ah, yes, now you know it. There's nothing to believe, right? So it's the same thing. I can say in your pocket you have some chats, but I don't know, but I believe, right? But you open it and see, then of course there is some money, then it becomes knowledge. So, you know, the difference between knowing and believing, you know, that type of thing. But in religion, as I said, there is some element in any religion, you have to go by belief. But in Buddhism, Buddha says that, okay, you be, have to believe it, but you have to believe it for good reasons. Okay. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. But human beings only create the God. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, how, uh, how can the human beings create the God? Okay, yeah, what I meant by that is like God centered religions say that God created human beings. But if when you look at Rig Veda, you can see that human beings are creating the concept of God. It's not like you can create gods, but the ideas of gods different names for gods, all these were done by uh, human beings. Now when we say Brahma, who gave that word, when we say uh, Varuna or Vishnu, Shiva, who gave these names? These names coming from heaven or something? No. Human beings, we gave the names. We said that, okay, God is like this. So actually, that is how human beings created God. And also, even the, you take the monotheistic concept of Christian, Judaic concept of God, God as all-knowing, uh, all-powerful, all these powers we attribute to what we believe to be God. So, when I said that it is not that God created world, but human being created God, what I meant is the concept, ideas about God were created by humans. Not like we can't create God, you know, like nobody can create God. Of course, God doesn't exist anyway, according to Buddhism. So if God doesn't exist, you can't create. But you can create the idea. You can create the world. So that's what we have done. That's what the Indians do. Okay. Now, fire is natural. But Indians considered it to be God. So you can say, Indians created the fire God. Right? Like that. Okay, Venerable, then uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will wind up from uh, here for today and we will uh, meet again for the continued discussion. So, thank you very much. <laughs>